And this has to deal with Elizabeth Warren basically calling out good old creepy, sleepy Uncle Joe. <laughs> yeah. uh, I yeah. love the nickname. Yeah, creepy, sleepy Uncle. Creepy, oh, I mean, come on. Yeah, look, Uncle look, Joe. Yeah, 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 you, Daniel. You've seen the video we put out. Yeah, Daniel did a fun. fantastic uh, video <laughs> about you know Biden making this announcement. But Didn't I say that we would be excited for Biden running? And here we are already. Yeah. So basically, once again, we are biting it up. Okay. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I wish I knew what he was whispering in everybody's I, ear. I don't, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, I don't. I don't want to know. I, 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 really, I really don't want to know. I, I, Little girl, what size shirt is? Yeah. I, oh God. I like okay. Your okay. No, please. So let's. Okay. First. First. Let's get on point. Let's Biden uh, it out. Yeah. Right, let's, 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 it up. I think you two are getting possessed by Biden. Maybe he's t- telepathically Those communicating. Those pearly whites. They're kind of so power. magnetic. I know. Okay. <laughs> So, so why is Elizabeth Warren uh, calling out uh, good old sleepy, creepy Uncle Joe? So this is actually very nice, especially with the story that we just did, that Warren has officially become, oh, this new thing that the media is very excited about. She's the first person to attack Joe Biden on something of the candidates that are out there. She went I back. I swore Bernie did the same thing. Yeah, too. but Bernie, remember, Bernie's just this small guy who only wins these weird white states, so he doesn't really matter, as we all know. <laughs> okay. So in 2005, uh, she believed that uh, Biden in a bill picked sides with the credit card companies instead of picking the side of the American people in a bill. And in another bill, she was very unhappy that he, that he basically polarized a, a bill about, um, ba- what is it, bankruptcy? Yeah, with uh, bankruptcy and the something with the credit card industry, so he threw in kind of a poison pill with abortion, which uh, hurt this bill. And she made the point that the message is unmistakable on on an economic issue that attracts millions of dollars of industry support. Women have no real political importance. And she's again discussing this uh, series of bills that uh, 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 Uncle Joe. Joe Biden, I should say, <laughs> has put together and fought. Again, this is what I said, and we've said in the show, I've said in numbers of videos, Biden has more baggage than anyone but Trump. You can hit him for racism, you can hit him for sexism, you can hit him for having money. I mean, his, the amount of money he raised when he entered the presidential race, almost all of it came from businesses and PACs. Biden is everything and more that Hillary Clinton was in the last cycle because Hillary Clinton walks in with this air of inevitability and again like I've said before many shows all the different advantages that she has Biden's the best that they can do because it seems like they they threw Kamala she did okay they threw Buttigieg she did okay and now they're putting all their weight behind Biden to see if he takes off so Elizabeth Warren is going after him and I think that's very interesting because if we go about what we were saying with Elizabeth Warren that she goes where consensus is what does that say about Biden if Warren is the first one according to these papers to attack her to attack him all right Cute. Yeah, well, this is really what this is uh, Elizabeth Warren's bread and butter, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like economic injustice and uh, calling people out in 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 the financial field. And you know, when when you have someone running for president against a woman like that, you know, she has all of the knowledge, all of the space to doing the calling out. And you know, it kind of harkens back to the last conversation we had about the Medicare thing. You know, I think that I, I mean, I really love how Elizabeth Warren's coming out swinging yeah. on this. And I think that it's a real shysty move um, to be slipping in items into legislation to um, either get get support or, you know, uh, uh, deflect support on a bill. And we see a lot of that going on all of the time. And so then what ends up happening is certain senators and certain uh, certain congressional members look like they're voting for or against something because of certain certain things get slipped into yeah. bills. And it is a really shady move to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I love that she's calling him out on that. And it just goes to show the character of Joe Biden. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this is something we knew about Joe Biden. And I think what the problem is, is that Especially those that are that listen to corporate media, okay? Because I think it's very important that we talk to people and actually have conversations with people who continue to watch corporate media or get their news from it. Is that everyone has these rose-colored, uh, just putting on their little glasses and seeing this, remembering the past of when Obama and Biden were in the White House. And the thing is, let's look back to what happened when Obama and Biden were in the White House. Uh, number one. Uh, they basically let the credit card co- uh, companies and the big banks and the corporations get away with everything they did during yeah. the 2008 recession.
session. We only look forward. Uh, we uh, basically they didn't hold the last previous administration accountable for any of its uh, you know crimes. More crimes. That, yeah, yep. that, that's and committed. I was on top of that, he only looking forward, except when it comes to expunging. Right. Uh, cannabis <laughs> records. Then right. it's like, no, 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 and we then, can't. And, no. Then, and then also we have to look at look right at the now. numerous times that Biden and Obama uh, basically compromised with the Republicans and gave them everything. Even when they had a supermajority in the Senate and House, they could have got single payer health care. They could have. They could have. They had that rare opportunity during his first two years. They did nothing. And Biden, at the end of the day, is somebody who looks down at millennial voters. He's gone on the record. Right. Look at his yeah. comments on busing. Look at his comments on desegregation. Mm. He literally Look, said he doesn't respect millennials. Yeah, and also... And if he wow, I hadn't heard that yeah, commentary. Yeah, yeah, wow. And, and if he, he does... Said, oh, they're just complaining. They don't... Oh, understand. yeah, the generation that's been burdened with the largest amount yeah, of debt. Well, fuck them. They, 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 all, they all have three jobs, but they're lazy and, yeah, you know... Yeah. And, and, <laughs> isn't it great when you have, like, the, it's like, oh, all oh, the Mexicans are lazy, but they're also taking all our jobs. <laughs> pick one. Yeah, pick one or the other. Yeah, and, exactly. and, and, and then not to mention, too, under Obama and Vice President uh, Biden... Uh, we had increased wars yeah. under their administration. Yes. Libya, Libya, Syria, Iraq, again, re-engaging in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yemen. Yemen. And then covert auctions all over. And then yeah. charging reporters with yeah. uh, espionage, right. putting them in solitary yes. confinement. Yeah. Yep, that's a pretty this big deal. This is the legacy that, I mean... If Biden ran like 10 years ago, he might have been considered a good candidate. Or, or is it at... Oh, wait, I forgot one other important issue that Biden... He ran twice the one lost. No, yeah, he mm -hmm. ran twice, especially that embarrassing one in 1988 where he plagiarized somebody. <laughs> Look that up, guys. Look at his 1988 race. It's embarrassing, and so is that speech where he's basically saying, I'm angry at myself. Well, no doubt you're angry that you got caught. You're jackass. angry you got caught. I'm That's what it means you when you're angry at yourself. You're angry, angry you got at caught. myself yeah. that I didn't get away with this. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm gonna get away with it too if it wasn't. For I get the, angry for the press. at myself when I lose my keys. Come yeah. on. <laughs> uh, so, so, that's, oh, and, and one last thing too, we have to remember about good old Obama and Biden is that. They were fighting very hard for TPP as well, mm. so, which is uh, basically if you do want to get get down to the very simple uh, schematics of what TPP was, think of it similar to NAFTA. Mm -hmm. And only yeah. we lose a lot of our actual sovereignty, right. which is just tr a trade deal. Like yeah. TPP is like, oh, here's how you deal with intellectual property. Here's how you deal with this. And if you wanna, if you have an issue, you have to have a board of corporate lawyers who are going to adjudicate. I'm sure nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. Obama liked it. Biden liked it a lot. Yeah, but I, I will say one thing. This is that, that system that was done during those eight years of Obama and Biden, it led to the creation and uh, the, the idea of Trump yeah. coming into office. And running a campaign like it's early to like 1998 or early 2000, you can't do that. Times have changed. They've really, yeah. really changed. Absolutely. And I still have to remind people of what happened during the Biden and Obama years because um, either it was just not brought to the forefront in, in our news media or it's been completely forgotten about and um, you, th there's a part of me that gets a little nervous saying this on air as well but I think in a lot of ways the Trump administration has done magical things yeah. in opening people's eyes to what it is we actually do in this country. He, he, he has put an ugly yeah. face. Trump and his administration has put an ugly face to what Obama has done during the And it years. was an all, I think that it was a necessary piece. I've been saying that too, that it's like, I think that hopefully in 10 or 15 or 20 years, people are going to look back at right now and say, maybe not, maybe they won't say, thank God for Trump, but they might mm -hmm. say, without Trump, we would have never seen how corrupt everything is. Because again, like Obama, brilliant statesman, mm -hmm. his voice stood up, spoke beautifully, really good at all this, but you know, he, he, he took away habeas corpus and had people killed and drone striked American citizens and it went into uh, way more wars than we were already at, mm -hmm. did more drone strikes to the and point that also attacked children whistleblowers. attacked whistleblowers, but to the point that kids are in the Middle East are terrified of uh, clear skies because that's when the drones come out. It's disgusting, and that's what I. That's what I, I have to keep telling a lot of people. It's just like you're saying over and over again. Is that like just go with just go with ICE? ICE was created by Bush, and everyone was fine with it. The powers that ICE currently has were made under Obama, and everyone was fine with it. Mm -hmm. But then suddenly, Trump takes this organization that yep. has that uh, that uh, that um, it reports directly to him and uses it like he's going to use it and everyone's like oh my god oh my oh, ice is a big problem it was a problem eight years ago 
but no one noticed because mm-hmm. Obama was this cool guy and there were these cool memes with him and Biden making jokes and their dogs. And, and the stuff. mainstream media, there, there's, media there's, is hugely, hugely to blame yeah. for that so, as well. So there's there, there's a couple things I want to state. First, I want to give a shout out to somebody in chat. Uh, Dingo, a Dingo ate my baby. Uh, <laughs> Biden's bankruptcy bills, why student loan debt can't be dismissed in bankruptcy, and he has a nerve to look down on millennials. Mm. Well said. And then number two. In yes, regards, thank you for that detail. That's in, true. In, yeah. in, in regards to Trump, you know, because I, I know we were talking a lot about this and we're talking about Biden because, like, let's face it, Biden is someone who, who is, who's in the race and the DNC and the corporate media is going to be taking, a, a, you know, doing whatever they can to make him the front runner. We already talked about mm-hmm. how the polling data yeah, lying was, was, the was, was, was manufactured, all right? Yeah. So they're willing to do the same things that they did in 2016, just like they're doing now. It requires us to be vigilant. But in regards to Trump, because I, I think it's very important we do address this. Trump is not the creator of the system that we have. He inherited all this stuff from previous administrations. It's not like he woke up one morning and say, I'm going to do this and that. It was already there for him to use. Trump is not the problem. He is the rash indicating that there's something wrong with the body politics of America. He didn't create the system. He's part of it. He inherited it. And now it's up to us, the American voters and citizens, to really step up and call for a change of this neoliberal system that we have, which is why we cannot have Biden become the nominee because he's going to make basically make the system run back as normal and we're all going to fall back to sleep. And Never- who knows the next monster we'll get. Yeah, yeah, and I think that we got lucky with Trump because Trump's an idiot. He's an idiot. Yeah. He's so what, dumb. It's What amazing. happens when we have someone with Trump's ideology but is smart someone like Mike Pence yeah Yeah. competent well yeah just competent he doesn't even need to be smart (laughs) yeah yeah let's be honest yeah and this is why Mike Pence is to me a more terrifying sentence as well or something you know Pence can talk he knows he knows Congress he knows Senate charisma that's all they need it's all again like Mm -hmm. But the other thing I want to throw this up is that we've already gone on a full tangent away from war and I might as well continue with this yeah that this is another part of Trump that I look forward to, that he has taken this coalition of Republicans that have existed, which is the religious right, the business uh, people with money, and then kind of that third kind of catch-all group. And he's split that third group away from the rest of the party. So, and on top of it, it uh, between 2020 and 2024 is when the Democrat the demographics are going to shift to such a point that the Republican Party is going to be even with all their voter suppression even with all their gerrymandering it's yeah. not going to matter at that point and on top of that the second that Trump leaves he's basically taking a third of the base with him who hate the Republican Party in the, in a very similar light that we as progressives hate the Democrats and the corruption mm-hmm. they have. It's the same sort of thing. And the Republicans are already just with their nails clinging to the edge of power. And like, he like Kit, you, you really nailed it when he got elected. It's Trump is the last hurrah of the angry white man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the thing is, and, this, and remember, let's say Biden or some corporate Democrat is going up against him. I said this during the time when Clinton was running. There's a 50-50 chance that Trump could win. And the same thing if Biden or is a nominee or any, anybody else. There's a 50-50 chance. The man won his election, okay? Mm-hmm. And I and people were starting to have a meltdown and freak out. If you want to avoid something like that, we have to look at the current system, and that is people want change, okay? Democratic voters, Republican voters, independent voters want change, and they want someone who's going to do it. You think we got Trump by accident? Mm-hmm. No. The system was already put in place for somebody like him to come around, and he easily defeated Hillary Clinton. No. I And also, I, I just I, the whole idea of Russiagate, I, I think it was a waste of time, but that's a whole other story for another day. I think as we get down to the final story about, like, because we deviated away from the story, but I, I think I want to get back on track. The, the very fact that now you have Democratic candidates, not just Warren, but also Bernie Sanders and some of the other Democrats yeah. challenging Biden because, you know, he's, he's being made as his front runner, but already... Look at his voting record, look yeah. at his track record, look at his past statements, look at what he has done in the past. And also remember, he's being manufactured. Mm-hmm. Corporate media is willing to lie to make him the front it's, runner. They, mm-hmm. they stand to lose if Bernie wants to break them up. Because remember, MSN is Comcast, CNN is Time Warner. Yeah. So I think that the only thing I want to go at is, I'll say it again, I am continue to look forward to covering Joe Biden, as you can tell. Yeah. Very fun. I get to really let loose, not pull my punches. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's it. So, 